In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to organic chemistry, what it is and how we can tell when we're looking at organic. So there's a difference between organic chemistry and biochemistry, and we're going to be focusing on just organic, but some of you might actually go into um, biochemistry courses in college. So the most common elements in both organic and biochem are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. And organic chemistry, which is what we're looking at, is simply the study of compounds containing carbon. Biochemistry, though, is the study of chemistry of living systems. So you might look at proteins, you might look at carbohydrates in biochemistry, where in chemistry we are only focusing on compounds that contain carbon. So just some general characteristics of organic molecules. Carbon can make four bonds. Remember that carbon always wants to make four bonds. It never wants a lone pair. So there are essentially three hybridization states and geometries of organic molecules. If they have all single bonds, like this picture on the left, this is tetrahedral, and the hybridization of this carbon is sp3, because notice there are four things bonded, if you remember using your fingers, sppp, -P -P, so sp3. If there's one double bond, so we have carbon maybe double bonded to an oxygen with two hydrogens off of it. That's trigonal planar because it has, it's uh, three zero, right? Its code would be three zero, three bonded, zero lone pairs because it, carbon only wants four bonds, no lone pairs. So this would be sp2 hybridized. Okay, so there are three things off of it, spp, sp2. Or you could have carbon with a triple bond. And so essentially you have it triple bonded to maybe a nitrogen and then single bonded to another group. This central carbon right here is linear. You have one uh, nitrogen on one side, one carbon on the other. It's simply sp hybridized. So there are essentially three different geometries and hybridizations that carbon can have because it wants four bonds. Carbon to hydrogen, that single bond, that's going to be the most common. And then carbon can form stable bonds, so pretty strong bonds, with other carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, and nitrogens, as well as the halogens. And then groups of atoms that determine how an organic molecule reacts are called functional groups. And we're going to specifically look at functional groups when we look at naming. So hydrocarbons. Okay, think about what hydrocarbon, right? Hydrogen and carbon. So hydrocarbons consist of only carbon and hydrogen. Um, they're going to be grouped based on the number of bonds between the carbon atoms. So if carbon is all single bonds, it's going to be called one thing. If carbon has a double bond, it's called something else. So there are four basic types of hydrocarbons. There are alkanes, which are all single bonds. There are alkenes, which has a double bond. There are alkynes, which has a triple bond. And then there are hydrocarbons that are called aromatic. And aromatic hydrocarbons are simply in a ring shape. It could have six, it could have three. Okay? But aromatic hydrocarbon uh, are simply in a ring. So since hydrocarbons are nonpolar, they're going to be insoluble in water, but they'll be soluble in nonpolar solvents, so maybe like oil. Um, melting points and boiling points are going to be determined based on the dispersion forces. So the lower molar mass is going to be gas, because they have very weak dispersion forces. They don't have as many electrons. Um, a medium molar mass, which means they have a medium amount of electrons, those are typically liquids. And very high molar masses, ones that have lots of electrons that are very polarizable, that means your dispersion forces are strong. Um, those are gonna typically be solids at room temperature. So alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, they're known as aliphatic hydrocarbons. And that means that they're fat hydrocarbons. Um, fats contain long carbon chains. So like fats that you eat are typically long carbon chains. Um, the alkenes, alkynes, and aromatic hydrocarbons typically have fewer hydrogen atoms um, than alkanes, and so they're called unsaturated hydrocarbons. Notice here we have six hydrogens, we have four, we have two, and then we have six here only because we have six carbons. Now, unsaturated hydrocarbons, which again are going to be the alkenes, alkynes, and the aromatics, um, the unsaturated are typically more reactive than um, the saturated, which means they have all hydrogens uh, in the alkanes. 